present this topic, which is an application of deep neural networks, that is face recognition, and I am doing this research with uh, Ramon Morros, that he will have some presentation tomorrow. So uh, when we talk about face recognition, we talk maybe about several problems. Uh, one of them is face detection in an image. You want to detect uh, one image. Then uh, sometimes this, uh, you have a face and it's uh, maybe uh, with rotations, with occlusions. But one of, more than talking about uh, occlusions, let's talk about the face is, is rotated, okay? In any, uh, in any ang angle. So one of the things that is done sometimes is to align and frontalize the face. It's easier to uh, do the recognition when the face is, is uh, frontalized. When we talk about face recognition uh, specifically, we may have two problems. One is identification and the other is verification. By identification, we mean that uh, we have one face and we decide, okay, this person is uh, uh, Ismael or this person is Xavi. So you have to decide who is that person. So this is a, a classification problem. And the other one is uh, verification, which, uh, for example, uh, Veronica comes and says, I'm a Maya, so I have to check if she is a Maya or not. So the system has to detect that she's not a Maya, okay? And, well, then you have people recognition, it's the same problem, but it, this may happen in, in videos, and it's one of the uh, projects we are working with, uh, with Ramon. And here you may have also some, what is called multimodality, where you have not only uh, image and video, but you also have uh, speech and text. And you may combine this information to uh, recognize the person. But um, <coughs> I will present three, three methods, but before presenting these methods, I will uh, just talk a little bit about some databases because, well, uh, before talking about databases, just uh, I wanted to, to point that uh, face recognition is very important in biometrics or security. Uh, and especially, uh, you, you may have different ways to do biometrics to, to detect, uh, to verify or recognize one person. But in, uh, let's say, in large spaces like airports, train stations, where you don't have, a, you, you won't put your finger to identify yourself, but you have plenty of cameras. This problem of, uh, of identifying people is uh, face verification is, uh, and recognition is very important. So many companies are working in these uh, face recognition uh, systems for, for security. And if you want to go to this uh, NEC proposal, I mean, to this video is very fancy. And you may see how they, they, they uh, detect people, detect faces and recognize them uh, in real time. Well, this is a video, but they, they have to do it in real time. Huh? Okay, so yes, what I wanted to say is before presenting these three, let's say, classical methods of face uh, recognition, I wanted to talk about uh, databases. When we are talking uh, on applications, we, we have seen ImageNet and other, and Coco and other databases. Databases are, uh, when you decide to work on one topic, they are uh, important because uh, that's a way that everybody that works on a, on a specific problem, they try their methods on the same databases. And uh, there are some popular databases in, in face recognition. One of them is, uh, it's called YouTube, and it's, uh, uh, as the name says, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, made by uh, extracting faces from YouTube videos. And you have plenty of pictures here, or more, uh, almost one million, not exactly. You also have to say how many identities, how many uh, classes you have in that database. And uh, one thing that you have, for example, is that in this database, the, the faces are aligned, so they are frontalized, okay? You have also other popular uh, databases. Another one is Face Scrap. It's also very uh, used. As you can see, you don't have so many faces, I mean, so many pictures, uh, and, and also uh, less, uh, less, uh, I, less classes, less uh, um, identities, but still it's, it's widely used, and um, 
for especially sometimes it's used not for training but for testing. Other uh, databases that are quite popular are, are Megaphase, this MS Array CFW from Microsoft. Uh, also, a very popular one is called uh, Lablet Faces in the Wild. As you can see, also there are not too many images, but they are quite widely used for for testing, not for training. And then uh, Celeb Faces is another one, and w which is, is nice. Sometimes we do some tests, some trainings using uh, these two databases, uh, Lablet Faces in the Wild and Celeb Faces, because they are celebrities, but they are not the, the same. And you can go to this uh, link here if you want to know more about some uh, databases for, for faces. Uh, I mean, this is a problem that is not new in deep, um, uh, as deep learning came uh, to be used, but uh, um, people have been working in this problem for many, many years. We also have created our, our own uh, uh, database with Ramon. We have taken pictures of faces from different places, from Google, and we have built the, uh, our little database too. So let's go to these three uh, methods that I wanted to explain to you. The first one is the, the basic uh, network that uh, Facebook is working, uh, is using. Uh, probably now uh, they have uh, more advanced, but this is an example which uh, is quite a, a nice one, one for ac academic purposes. And um, just see that what they do is first to detect the face, then once they have the, the face, so you see that you have like uh, here, uh, they put some facial points, detect facial points, and they frontalize, okay? Uh, this is the, 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 what they adopted. And uh, you also can see that uh, it's nice when you look at these architectures to, to see what you, you, you see in these figures, eh? for example, they work with 152 by 152 plus RGB uh, uh, images, and then they create this uh, um, convolutional layer where you can see that th this is the size of the, of the filters, 11 by 11, and they create 32 uh, uh, feature maps. So you have this convolutional layer, uh, max pooling layer, convolutional layer, uh, I, I don't remember what is L4. Uh, well, any, anyway, you have these different layers. Uh, it's just layer, they call it layer. And then you have at the end one feature representation. And usually, maybe we, have, we didn't stress that much that we have this convolutional layer, and this is called uh, fully connected layers, when all your inputs here are connected to all your neurons, okay? So this is a fully connected layer. And at the end, you, you have your labels. And this is, you see, very simple architecture that, uh, that is used by, by, by Facebook, OK? And there is something else. I mean, this is the basic networks to do what is the identification of people. Mm. But they also use this network to do what is verification, eh? to, uh, to see if one person is the one he claims to be. So they use two approaches. One is just to, to use a chi-squared instance, which is something else that you take the, two, the person that uh, is claiming to be the person and, and the, the, let's say, the, the difference between Veronica and Amaya, okay? And so you, you just use this simple formula. And what your system is going to learn when you train is this weight that you have in front, OK? So as before, Maya presented some uh, uh, work that you have to train the system to compute a threshold. Here, you, you train your system to, to know the values of these, of these weights, OK? Um, well, this is one, one, one option. Uh, in this case, uh, sometimes we, we mix different uh, machine learning methods. In this case, uh, they, they train this with you using an SVM, okay? Not the deep network, but the SVM, and only for that specific problem. 
Another uh, very popular method they use to, to verify, to ver for verification, is the Siamese network. It's an old, uh, I mean, uh, it, this uh, Siamese idea is an, a very old um, uh, idea, not so old, I mean, 12 years ago. Uh, for you, it's a lot. For me, not, not that much. <laughs> um, but the difference is that here, what it's different is that you use like two networks in parallel, but this time the networks are convolutional networks. The same network that you have used for, for classification, you're going to put uh, what the individual and the individual he claims or she claims to be. So you run these two through the same network, and at the end uh, you compare with uh, such uh, absolute difference. Okay, so. It's not exactly like before, it's, it's this way. Uh, and here, you, what you train is this coefficient, okay? In this case, instead of SVM, they, they work with the uh, standard, with the cross entropy loss. Mm? So these are, uh, this is one solution, the solution that uh, uh, Facebook adopted. Let's say that for training, they use a, a, a database that is, uh, is private, it's their own. I guess they use Facebook uh, images, and they didn't uh, put public the, the database. So they used their own database to train, but for test, they, they were using YouTube faces and, and face scrap, I think. The other uh, uh, method that I wanted to present you is the one uh, used by, by Google. So they say, OK, um, they they actually say, okay, I don't care much which uh, deep uh, net, uh, network I use here. <coughs> In their uh, examples, they use uh, VGG and they, uh, and they use Google Net, but they say, okay, I can use whatever uh, deep network I want. But then at the output, they also, uh, let's say, mm, in the output you will have a feature space, which is a feature space at it's uh, Euclidean, so there is uh, uh, the idea is that you can, like when you do principal component in analysis on, or one of these classical methods where you are in a feature space and uh, you measure the, the Euclidean distance between uh, uh, the classes to, to decide what, what is the, what is the, I mean in this case it's verification, so uh, who is that person, okay? But, uh, they, they do something different, is that um, when they train, they use what, what is called a triplet loss. So this is based on the following. In, in the examples, uh, I'm not for verification, I'm not going to put, uh, uh, let's say, two different persons or two equal persons to train the system, but I will use three uh, uh, different examples, and these three, with, these three different examples I have an anchor, which is uh, this is the person that I say uh, it's the, the person that I want to, to verify. And then I put a positive, which is the same person than the anchor, and a negative, which is a different person of the anchor. And the system is trained in order that, okay, let's put this positive close to the anchor and very far with the one which is the negative, okay? So that's a way to, um, to, very, to this uh, verification method. And then you build uh, your loss function based on these uh, Euclidean distances. I mean, this is the distance of anchor and positive. This is the distance uh, between anchor and negative. And here you say the minimum distance you will want to have between this uh, difference and this difference one, okay? Okay, so this is the, the method they use to verify, and it works also pretty well. Um, they also train the, the system and use uh, YouTube faces, and, uh, and I guess they, they also, they were using these classical databases for, for, for uh, getting some nice results on so also in, in face verification. And uh, the third method I wanted to present, it's interesting because they do both, they try to solve both problems, 
uh, that is verification and identification using the same networks. And the way they do it is they, uh, they have uh, one loss function for veri verification and one loss function for uh, identification. But mm, so you will have parameters for, for the verification and parameters for, for the identification in this, in this set of uh, parameters, but at the end, what you will get is unique parameters for verification and identification. And the way they do it, uh, it's in the following way. It's, I know I shouldn't put this in here, but I will go to the point that I want to show you, is that they use a classic uh, stochastic gradient descent, so you compute gradients, but you, you do it for, um, let's say, for the parameters of the identification and for the parameters of the verification. Okay, and then uh, uh, at the end, for I mean, for two different uh, identities, they they compute a combination of identification and verification, and at the end, these parameters that are the parameters of the convolutional network, not the ones of verification and identification, are built from these two. Uh, combinations of verification and, and identification, okay? And this, uh, they, they show some results which are also nice and they obtain good results for verification and identification. Uh, they also use something for verification that is interesting. Um, it's a one, uh, let's say, one uh, loss function that is uh, based on John Bi a joint Bayesian model. Uh, in a way, uh, this is a way to, to measure distances between two, fa two faces, two persons that claim the, the, to be the same. And what they do is to compute uh, joint distributions uh, of two people. Because uh, Bayes' uh, first approach was to to compute a probability of distances between uh, two different, uh, two different uh, subjects, okay? So maybe in this image we see clear that we have a space, uh, a space of different persons, but if we could get closer to one person, you have also a space, the same person, but with different uh, poses. That is like this X there, a model of a face, it's, it has two components, that is a component which is the identity, and the other one which is, uh, represents the variability the, okay, of, of that, uh, that person. That is the intra, intrapersonal variations. Maybe here, uh, okay, there's a mistake I will correct. The, uh, above, mu is, uh, uh, extrapersonal variations and epsilon is intrapersonal variation. So you have like these two components, eh? like in the picture, to measure uh, this uh, within one person and comparing with other person. Okay, but the important thing here is that you have this uh, joint distribution, and from this uh, log likelihood ratio, you're going to um, to uh, to to make the test and to decide. Uh, if two persons, uh, you can verify if the person is, is the, the, the person that claims to be, okay? This John Bayesian model has been very used in face recognition in different, uh, let's say, networks and, and, and proposals. Um, okay, just to finish. Uh, Nowadays, with those databases that I have shown you, the results, uh, the accuracy is quite high. And um, I mean, you, you may see that uh, like in ImageNet, you are going to almost uh, very good results. Uh, you see, okay, what else, what can we, what sh we should do? So there are still a lot of open uh, challenges in face recognition. <coughs> One thing is that, uh, okay, I, I've told you that the Facebook uh, proposal first was to detect the face and frontalize. But for the other proposals, for the Google one, for other ones, 
uh, you don't need to, to, in some cases, you don't need to detect the face. You have to be, I mean, close by. You cannot have a little face in a, a huge uh, image. Otherwise, you need still face detection. I didn't talk about deep learning for face detections. These were all face recognition problems, but um, there are algorithms to detect faces based on deep learning. But in any case, once you detect face, faces, sometimes, I mean, I, I, pose, I pose this problem, okay? The, still, the, the, it is difficult in a large image to, to detect a face, especially when there are some, um, some illumination, some occlusions, like I say here. Uh, you are rotating, people aging, okay? Are you able to recognize this person while they, uh, they are getting older? It's difficult, so some people are working in this aging problem, or as I said, this intra-class variation, this uh, the saint uh, character who is uh, changing uh, hair, hats, apparels, and everything. Is your algorithm able to detect that this is the same person? This is challenging, and as I told you, we are now working on uh, problems of multimodality uh, in difficult problems when uh, you have video, uh, videos and you have partial annotation. That means you don't have, uh, like we said before, you don't have levels for every uh, person, and sometimes in these videos, uh, the labels are wrong, so you have to detect that the, your annotation is, is wrong. And with Ramon, we are also working in, in incremental learning. He will talk about that tomorrow. Uh, by that we mean we have a database and we have new uh, identities being uh, added to your database. How do you deal with that? You don't want to recompute the whole network. You want just to, to, I mean, to add it and to, to get uh, the same performance with new people uh, that you add to your, to your data. And, and that's it. Thank you.